Hello there, I'm Blackbright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK, bringing you the best of news and views and opinions, whatever you like. Anyway, if it's the first time you're coming to my channel, please like, subscribe and share. Um, today's topic, Amazon is partnering with the Home Office. You may or may not know this, for me, it was a bit of a shock. I heard they were doing it in the United States, didn't realize they were doing it here. It does mean that because of the sensitivity of the information, I am going to have to read most of it. I'm also going to go through Microsoft's privacy statement, not today, but because of what it's saying about Amazon, Facebook and Microsoft, and I just recently got a document that I'm supposed to sign off, um, I wanted to read through it. Ordinarily, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't really read through their terms and conditions and everything else. But I'm really going to read. It is quite a long document and it's quite off-putting. And I'm sure the majority of us, when we get those Microsoft agreements, please read it. And they give this little summary. We totally ignore it. But I'm going to try. I hate reading. But I'm going to try and read it and go through it with a fine tooth comb to see what I can find out, to see if it corresponds with what I'm going to tell you about Amazon. OK, so excuse the lack of eye contact. Um, Amazon Cloud It's going to be a one stop shop for biometrics, fingerprints and all that kind of stuff. And they've partnered with the Home Office. Um, I didn't want to go through the whole lot, but everything seemed important and I've kind of condensed it. Um, so hopefully, but I'm going to put the links and, you know, it will give you all the information. OK, um, so Amazon are storing biometric data belonging to millions of Britons as part of the partnership with the UK government, which is the Home Office on Amazon Cloud. Amazon's one stop shop, i.e. the cloud, will be storing analysed biometric data, i.e. fingerprints, facial matching and DNA information of millions of people around the world to improve the efficiency of law enforcement and immigration officials. Now, I don't know how they're going to get the biometric data, because when I go on Amazon, I log in and put in my password and that's it. I'm not using the facial recognition on my phone. I'm not using the finger. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe when you um, uh, when you when you get your phone and you can opt for the to you know forego the password and use your facial recognition. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe you're agreeing inadvertently. Same with Amazon, they're all linked. You see, Microsoft, because you've opened your computer that way, your PC that way, it's probably linked with Amazon and every kind of service that you use on your computer. And they link that information to other people. That's just that's just a thought. Because, and you know, also, some of these phones, you use your fingerprint instead of a pin code to get into your phone. It's probably all linked. Now, this, like I said, this is just my thought process because I don't know how else Amazon would get that information. That's the only way, because when you think they all work together, they're all interfacing with different platforms. So it's very easy for Amazon to link with partners like um, um, Microsoft and Facebook. I mean, a lot of Facebook, they're telling you to open up you know, make it easy. Use your face to open up Facebook. You don't need a pin code. Everything is made to look so convenient. So that's probably how they're going to do it. Because I was wondering how they might be able to do it. But that is a thought. Hold that thought. Anyway, um, Amazon's web services, which is AWS, is a secure cloud services platform offering computer power database storage, content delivery, and other functionality to help business scale and grow. In simple words, AWS allows, well, it would be allowing the home office to do the following things, running web application servers in the cloud to, to host dynamic websites. So they're all going to be interlinked by the looks of it. 
In America, the Agency Office of Biometric Identity Management will or has replaced its le legacy biometric, ana <laughs> biometric analysis platform called the Automated Biometric Identification System or IDENT with a new more robust system hosted by Amazon Web Services. IDENT essentially serves as an empt oh, I feel as though I'm talking, you know, like when you're doing this double dutch, serves as an enterprise-wide clearinghouse for troves of biometric and biographic data collected by the Transportation Security Administration, Customs and Border Protection, Secret Service and other Homeland Security components. The system links fingerprints, I iris and face data to a biographic information, allowing officials to quickly identify suspected terrorist, immigration violators, criminals and anyone else included in their databases. In total, IDENT contains information on more than 250 million people at Homeland Security a Homeland Security spokesman told NextGov. Now that's in America. They have a similar system going on in the UK. Homeland Security is in the process of replacing IDENT with Homeland Advanced Recognition Technology System or HART, HART. The new system will include the same biometric recognition features as its predecessor and potentially additional tools that could identify individuals based on DNA, palm print, scars, physical markings and tattoos. Whereas IDENT stores records in government-run data centres, the Homeland Security solicitation states Hart will reside in the Amazon Web Services. FedRAMP, Certified GovCloud. So they've got a government cloud as well, by the looks of it. Furthermore, biometric matching capabilities for fingerprint, iris and facial matching will be integrated with Heart in the Amazon Web Services GovCloud. Amazon Web Services will also store Heart's biometric image data. Deep, very deep. The AWS cloud computing platform provides the flexibility to build an immigration application in the way the home office needs it. AWS is managed or is planning to manage the home office in infrastructure and they claim they can do it without compromising scalability, security or dependability. Now, we all know the problem with facial biometric data. I've done a video on that already. They claim that the innocent have nothing to fear. They reckon that techn technology is so powerful it can see through disguises. However, failure rate ranges between 81% in one study, 96% in another study, and 100% in a th further study. Academics from the University of Essex have six trials across London and they're the ones who came up with those percentages. And they also agree it's human rights violation, but they're not going to care about that. Out of 42 people who were stopped during the trial, 22 were misidentified and only eight were being sought. They've got something called the surveillance creep that can track people who are not wanted by the courts. Who are not wanted by the courts. Not who are. Liberty Human Rights dangerously says it's dangerously intrusive and discriminatory and has no legal backing. Misidentification means the spot arrest and void of the legal rights we would normally expect. In racial bias, of course, London Policing Ethics Panel warned of this in May 2019 that the facial recognition is, you know, is, constitutes racial bias. 
The technology does not work on the darker skin tone. It works best on light skinned women and worse on dark skinned women. Freedom of information bequest found that that a 14 year old schoolboy was fingerprinted after being misidentified. And those fingerprints, they stay on whatever system they have. A man was fined for public order offence for refusing to be scanned in Romford, which means that you don't even have a choice. If they want to scan you, they scan you. And if you object, you can get fined, basically. Anyway, Amazon met with the Immigration and Customs Enforcement. This is in America. And they are apparently selling biometric data with Facebook. And Facebook is also in, in this as well, like I said before. To, bio, to data officials, hold on, Amazon is selling biometric data and data officials are already using facial recognition system which includes immigration history, personal connections, addresses, phone records, biometric traits and other information. All of that data and the algorithms powering ICM are now being migrated to Amazon Web Services in their entirety. A company called Palantir pays Amazon approximately $600,000 a month for the use of its service, according to the report's authors. $600,000 a month. A new investigation public today sheds more light on the web of tech companies involved in supporting immigration departments in the UK and USA. An online government database shows that Amazon holds the largest share, 22% of federal authorization under FedRAMP program and 62% of the highest level authorizations usually needed to handle data for law enforcement systems. AWS is no stranger to hosting sensitive government data, having already claimed the CIA, Defense Department, NASA and other federal agencies as customers, in part because of perceived security improvements over government legacy systems. Amazon is courting controversy with plans to store biometric data belonging to millions of Britons as part of the partnership with the UK government mainly the Home Office. Now I'm going to put all these links in so you know where I got this information from. The proposed one-stop shop for all fingerprints, facial matching and DNA information is intended to improve the efficiency of law enforcement and immigration officials. A spokesman for Amazon Web Services said, when customers, including the UK government, use AWS, they always own their data and it does not move without their consent. But how is consent obtained? That is what I want to know. Is it, is it by clicking on OK for the cookies? And do you notice more and more websites are not letting you see what's on it unless you click OK? Have you noticed that? Every website I go on, they've got this big thing that blocks the screen and you have to click OK or block or whatever. If you don't click OK, you can't see the information. That's one way of getting our consent. And it's so annoying, especially if you want the information. But that's how they're getting our consent. I don't know if you've come across websites like that. Um, now we know why Amazon Cloud's business has taken off. Amazon states, with AWS, the UK government gets greater security and reliability, accelerates innovation and saves millions of pounds compared to their old their old on-premises IT suppliers. By choosing AWS, the UK government is also supporting a vast ecosystem of small and medium-sized systems, integrators and independent software vendors, many of them based in or with large offices in the UK. That offer products that offer products and services that complement and help customers take full advantage of AWS. When customers, including the UK government, use AWS, they always own their data. Their data stays in the AWS region they choose and it does not move without their consent. They can choose to encrypt their contact for added security and content. 
that and content that has been encrypted is rendered useless without the applicable decrypted decryption keys because AWS has a world class team of security experts monitoring systems 24 seven to protect customer content. UK government departments are choosing AWS for their most sensitive workloads. So we know, well I gather from this AWS, to me, it's a platform that we use when we're, we get in, if we use social media, media, it'd be Instagram, it would be Facebook, it would be Twitter, it will be all these new, fan, new fandangled websites. It would be all the online, the big online companies like eBay, like Amazon. And um, I reckon the whole gamut are all integrated on this website. And I believe that by opening your computer because the one upstairs i've got a laptop upstairs and every time i go up there it says um do you want to forget about using your pin all you've got to do is looking the screen and you know you don't have to you don't need your pin anymore don't get lazy if you haven't got lazy already don't get lazy use the pin i know it's laborious fingerprints are so easy to use you know what i mean but that fingerprint is not stopping that, that, that phone. It's forming biometric data and going into this large database. When you're looking into that screen, like I'm looking at you now, my iris, if I was doing the photograph and opening up my computer with face recognition, my iris is forming part of that biometric database. Maybe when I'm putting my fingers on the keys, I don't know. But they're collecting all kinds of data. And I know that, you know, when you're buying things, they kind of get an idea of your habits. That's why I'm not a consistent person. I'll buy a lot one month. I don't buy nothing for about two or three months. And then I don't buy the same thing. There are a few things I, I am quite consistent with. But you know, they've got us down pat. They know our habits. And the thing is, this has been going on so long, that it's probably too late to even switch now. The majority of people have got so lazy, they think, oh, I can't be bothered to put in a pin. Let me just use my fingerprint. It's so much easier. And it is easy. When you're opening up your bank, when you, you know, when you've got your online banking and you, you think that's the securest way. But I was thinking the other day, supposing you fainted or you dropped dead. They could probably lift up your finger, open up your phone and open up your bank accounts, couldn't they? They could just put your finger, your, your thumbprint or whichever one is on it to open up your phone, really. So it's not that safe. They'll probably put your face up and open up your eyes and <laughs> try and make you look into the screen. It's not funny. Anyway, I'm sorry it was long and laborious, but I hope you get the gist of what I was trying to share with you. I had to read it because if I didn't read it, it would be, um, I'd probably get it totally wrong. Anyway, like I said, I am going to, most of us, 90% of us use Microsoft. If we don't use Word, we use something in Microsoft. So, and most of us are not going to read that agreement. So I'm going to do that work for you. I'm going to go through it with a fine tooth comb and I'm going to come up with, if I see anything untoward, I'm going to do a video on it. And that's all for now. Bye bye.